got a problem with the suspension. These airbags are not filling up. It's pretty well on the ground. That's including on the back. And the problem I'm having is I have to get underneath here and it's really low. The only way is to get it to squeeze under this part here to get in and then get between the fuel tanks. And I gotta find a connector to this box over here. This box is right over here. there regulates the height. It doesn't have leveler bars on here. It regulates the pressure of the air in the bags and it lowers it down by regulating the, the air pressure. So it doesn't have leveler bars and I don't have any air going in my back airbags. So it's pretty well dropped. I want to get that fixed because it's really hard on the U-joints. But I'll do the best I can. But the only place is to squeeze underneath here. The skirts are too low. I got this release panel here that will get you underneath and there's levelers, these uh, release bars here, the, these are pins. And that way you can try to get underneath it, but it's on the passenger side. But sometimes it's easier to just go ahead and, uh, and crawl underneath the, the, uh, the highest point. And everything here is on the ground, you can't really sneak under there. You can see how low the suspension is. But this tri pack is really too low. I can't squeeze under there. If I have the problem, I'll have to walk all the way from the rear all the way up. But the connectors in uh, the frame rail on the passenger side. And I got to get over there and look at it. It's pretty dark, so I brought my flashlight and get my grubbies on when it comes to um, being a mechanic out here. We always have to have two different outfits out here, one to work on the truck, and uh, it's um, all about diesel, smelling, oil, and grease, and all that shit will be on Yander Road, um, uh, dirt. But it's time to see if I can squeeze underneath here. Looks like it can. Uh, I got the exhaust pipe. It looks like I can squeeze around that. Well, that's my mission here. I gotta do that before I go into California. But you gotta be really patient. Sometimes you just have to stop being the driver and then be a mechanic here. Really see what you can do here. <coughs> well, I'm hoping I can get underneath this dog. If not, I got these pins I can pop out and get this fairing off. Oh, it looks like a tight squeeze there. Yeah, it looks like there are cutter pins here on the latch. Remove pins, door access panel hinge. So store it on here. And lift the latch, allow the fairing to open slightly, lower latch and grasp fairing with both hands, lift and remove fairing. And I'll get you underneath here if I have a problem. But it's always the hardest the first time. Finding this fairing and pin. I don't want to scratch anything up here. Sneak under here. <coughs> no, these airbag 
brakes here, these air tanks, I mean, they're really too low. It's hard to get underneath this dog. But the two air tanks are here. Looks like you got all your releases here. At least I know where these uh, cables are at here. To yeah, every time you fill up, you're supposed to hit these uh, cables here and release and get some water out of the, the tanks, the air tanks. This one has. It sounds like it's got some water in it. know that. But I'll put this fairing back on. It looks like I can't sneak under there. But it looked pretty easy to take off. Just put these hinge, hinge points here. Cutter pins. The direction is due to just uh, put them up here so you can see them. are in. But it looks like a really hard place to, to get to these cables, so you do have to take this fairing off just to release the air. That's interesting. Alright, go to this other way. Let's get around this box. Sometimes I go in the back and slide in and go around the, the rear ends. You just wiggle all the way up there. While you're under here, you can always check these out.
over. Looks like there's nothing up there. Now you guys can hear me a little bit better. Uh, it's, it's harder to go backwards than up because it takes your overalls right to the crack of your pants here. This is for your air brakes sensor. This is a carrier bearing here that holds your drive shaft from slopping down or wobbling. That uh, looks pretty good. You gotta look at the rubber around here. Well, make sure once you have lower suspension, you want to check your U joints real good. Alright. And these wires here, this will be the harness. I don't see anything here. I got this connection here. I'm looking for anything that's broken or disconnected. And that looks pretty good. And so it goes to the, the generator here. Alright. Mm. Now, looking to see where that wiring harness will go and it's this one here this is the one that goes to that panel and that goes past this connector so this isn't it and that goes right to this harness and this harness wraps on the side and sure enough it'll shoot all the way up See that too much, baby. They said they disconnected it, and they went and just uh, disconnected that uh, automatic height adjustment when you go past 45 miles an hour, it lowers the suspension. But I don't have that problem when it comes to finding them disconnecting anything. Alright, I'll open up the hood and see if it's under there. That's all about reversing steps. See, I can't get underneath this box here. That's where I hold my chains. But I'll keep on going back. Sneak around here. Is that to watch where you grab so you don't be pulling any wires or anything. But it's time to be a caterpillar and start crawling like it. You now you start appreciating snakes and caterpillars, how they have to move around. Worms. How they have to eat themselves through everything. I'm almost at the end here. As you can see, it gets to be a dirty mess.
That's all checked. <laughs> These are the latches here. I'm gonna adjust my camera now. Hope all of you can see this. Yeah, it should be alright. Everything's all hidden in here for aerodynamics. Shut this light now. There you go. Yeah, this is a bull guard. It really helps on uh, pushing all the animals away, but. I see him hit it and then all of a sudden this bar here smashes into the hood. But these hoods are pretty nice. They're, they're a, a three-piece kind of hood where if you hit one side you don't have to replace the whole hood. You can just replace two sides in the top. And everything else is grill assembly. They call it a four-piece. Alright, so the bull guard goes down. Sometimes you can get in there and get the hood, but you trap yourself. It's better just to go on the side and lift it up. There you go. This here is a 505 horsepower Detroit. Seems to be a nice runner. Good horsepower. Alright, I'm looking to see where they would put that. I was following the wires that came all the way up to here. And that red went into this panel. That's the positive. This harness, let's see, that's the drain for the air. Cleaner. And those other ones are hoses. So it's on the inside of the frame maybe. Oh, that's the starter motor. It, it all wrapped up here. Right. Looking carefully to see where they tucked it. I went all the way to the front here underneath. I did not see that. wouldn't be here. That's for the air dryer. They even got a filter for the air dryers now. That's really nice. But these airbags are all pretty good up here. It's just the back four. Hmm. Alright. One last look here on the driver's side. Alright. Let's see if you tucked it in here. All these, I got positives here. It goes right to the starter. Uh, this harness here. Uh -oh, make sure that doesn't cut a hole. That's right on the edge of the sharp edge here. It's probably just a drain. Yeah, it's a drain, probably for the air conditioning inside. Where it drains out. When your um, carpet gets uh, full of water, then it's this hose right here that gets plugged up or frozen. You want to make sure that's always cleaned out. And that usually goes right to the air conditioner. And then it's a tray inside underneath the dash. And then it fills up and it leaks right over right in the floor on the passenger side usually. And everybody forgets about that drain getting clogged up. Through the years, there's just elements and dust and all that becomes little cloggy messes and it clogs up these hoses and you have to put a coat hanger in there and shove it in there and it pops out. If not, you go on the top inside and you shove it down and you clear that whole drain system on the air conditioning. Well, new equipment like this will take a while. Well, that's neat. This here's a little pump here that you can go ahead and um, pump your... Uh, your feel into your filter here. That's a nice setup there. And the carriers have it and uh, the caterpillars have it. Now the Detroit's got the pump. 
before you'd have to replace um, your fuel filter here and you would uh, really um, step on the, the throttle when you start it and just rev it up and just get that the um, fuel all the way through the system even though you fill it up from the cap here. Uh, they used to call it a Raycore filters and that and when they first started this was upside down and then they turned it on the top end so that was the big improvement. I don't see what the mechanic at the yard was saying when it comes to them disconnecting that and putting it into a sandwich bag. And, but I got a no-go on that. Alright, everything's been inspected. This is your wiper motor here with your wiper assembly. That's pretty neat how they tucked it under here. Pretty uh, easier than the, the Freightliner condo that went out almost every other year. All right, looking for any kind of plugs or anything that they disconnected. But so far everything's looking stock. No visual problems doing a full inspection like this. But let's get this hood closed. I want to give it a little push because it seats on uh, this rubber grommet. Mm -hmm. I'll shut off my flashlight here. It's mainly just getting it onto the, the part where it hooks and pushing it in. If you have a problem on one side, just go on the other side first and I'll pull it down a little bit. That's why you want, you want to push it down a little bit. To set in those rubber grommets. There it is. This little guard here. These locks are really simple. Just put it right over and make sure it's tucked in. Got these levers here. These slides and locks right here. That's good, you don't want that falling down. And these good latches are really tucked in pretty good. There, that's it. Alright, everything else is connecting the battery again. That's pretty easy. It's mainly just sliding my tool tray away. And you have an on and off switch here. That just turns everything on. Alright, put everything back the way it should look. I always have a nice mat here because you always bring in the dirt. Okay. Looks like that was not it. I'll find another problem here. Okay, it's a little quieter for you guys. All right, the yard mechanic called um, Freightliner, and uh, they said they they put that sensor, or that sandwich bag, between these drives. So I had to disconnect here, put my grubbies back on, and. You have to have two different uniforms, one to drive and one to work on a truck. But he's saying it's between the two axles in front of the sensor here and the inside rail. And he tucked it um, behind the sensor. So it would be on this rail on the inside. I slid all the way in. I did not see that. But it's mainly I was looking more in uh, where the cab is. 
But now that I have this pulled out so I can look and see where it's at, it's all about getting uh, on the top of this. And he disconnected the, the plug for this automatic leveling ride here that puts air in the bags. This morning before I went to Oakland unloaded and these bags got uh, filled up. So I'm hoping when they disconnected that connector they put it in a sandwich bag. And I'm hoping that that sandwich bag is just filled up with water and it's shorting it out. And that's a really good idea to really be a, um, a really a detective on this. To really look at this and see where this sandwich bag is that they say. But I looked all over and I did not see that. And if they tucked it, it would be, he said, underneath the two axles. And I'm hoping it would be right here somewhere. And I'm hoping it would be right behind the sensor, which it isn't. everything looks stock and you want to really look at things carefully because you don't want to mess with the warranty that's on here you know, it's a, this is a 2021 so you really can't start splicing stuff around it's on the passenger side between the two rails so I will have to pull this up just a little bit more but I'm at the security gate at the entrance of where I'm going to be loading. I have to be here at 6 in the morning. And they got nine spots here. And I picked this one here. And it looks like other guys are waiting here too. It's a good staging area. And the guards will be here about 5 a.m. I'm going to make sure I check in early here. Now I got this farther. I had the reefer set at zero, but when I pick this up, it's going to be 10 below zero. So let's see what's going on here. All right. <clears throat> In the back, you got the airlines, and that goes all the way to the, the sensor that um, senses the, the air pressure in these bags. And they used to have leveler bars. And they put it in the middle, and it was really nice. Um, before they had four leveler bars, and it went down to one, and that regulated the, the level of, of the middle of the axle. And it just gave the pressure. It was called the actuator, and the actuator was um, uh, regulating the, the pressure that would be in the airbags itself. And these are full, and now they uh, disregarded the. the um, leveler bars and that would discharge the air and fill it up and now it doesn't do that it just puts in uh, the pressure of the air in the airbags and let's see here I do have everything set for the brakes and the maxis itself you can see they put them in sideways now instead of in the back so there's no real adjustments you can see that so they really replaced where you had to pull and adjust the, the brakes and that's all different now. It's all internal, so you can you can see what the Bendix um, kind of uh, braking system is now for the Maxis right here. And if you if you blow one of your pancakes in the Maxis, usually you can back it off. And this one here, you, it looks like you don't. But with this Jake brake system, it's just really nice. So you don't really have to use the brakes whatsoever. Even going down Donner Pass into Sacramento, I didn't have to touch the brakes once. So I'm really impressed with that. But going between here, I wonder if they slid the, the fifth plate to tuck this in. But I don't visually see what that mechanic was saying about disconnecting this box here and you put it in a sandwich bag and I'm thinking it filled up with moisture. I'm looking really carefully and I'm trying to see if I can get it on the other side and eyeball that. If not, I'll have to adjust the, the sliders back or forward to get to the middle. I'm looking at it carefully. I don't see them disconnecting that. I 
really look at it. It's electronic control height system. It's a EC H A A H A S, and that's this box here. And the air goes in and it regulates everything, so I don't see that. Let's see here, I'm following the airbags. And that's the blue. I'm looking to see where that dog is. And I wonder if they slid the, the fifth plate forward to get to it. But he said it was on the passenger side. Oh, he does have a lovely bar here. We got one lovely bar here. Good. Damn. So if I have a problem with that airbag, I'm going to have to see about disconnecting this lovely bar. And then I raise it up to get some air in the bags. Now that lovely bar, which I don't have a dump on it. That would be this plug, and this plug is plugged in. And that's all set. So I don't see that Freightliner dealership actually unplugging this. And that's on the driver's side. Alright, I inspected it carefully. back to the yard, Jacob's going to look at it and he's going to see the same thing. He was, uh, that guy in the Freightliner dealership, his, he missed this truck. He might have done it to other trucks, but not this one. Because this is a straight line shot, this drive axle, when you got this perfect. It has this carrier bearings right here. And you can see it's a straight shot. But once you lose the bags, everything starts angling different on the U-joints. In the olden days, when you drop them, it starts banging. They're just twisted, but this is more a straight line. But I just don't see where they disconnected anything here. They kept it really stock, and the mechanic didn't um, disconnect any harness and hit it anywhere. And visually, I don't see it at all. But, oh, well, I wanted to show you guys a, a quick fix, but. At least I know there is a front leveler bar. And if I have a problem, I'll be disconnecting that and leveling that manually. And once I fill it up, then I uh, put it back together. And it's an easy reach here when it's disconnected, but I'll be reaching in. The, the trailer is right about here when it's connected, so I would have to disconnect off the plate just a little bit off, a halfway off get here to get my hand down here or even crawl up to the top and uh, disconnect that leveler bar and then move it up and down to see if I can get some air in there and that would be my way to really rig that but that's the right way to go anything else I'm going to go ahead and take uh, these chains out and put it in this box and switch everything over and uh, this is a good box here and uh, I should have some room in here and get these bottles inside the compartment and start bagging these um, chains. I got two doubles and uh, um, eight singles, so that way I can have all four singles on all the drives or I can go ahead and put uh, two doubles and um, six singles. And then if there's ever really a problem, I can put the, the other ones on steering if the winds are that bad. And they're getting up to 70 to 80 mile an hour winds in Wyoming. But Donner needs doubles. The doubles are pretty good. And they put them on the front drives. That way it's in the middle of the truck. And that way it doesn't slide to the right and left. Uh, especially in grades and all that. If they want it in the front drives. And it's, it's a safety measure they do. But other than that... I guess I'll just bring it home and let Jacob look at it. And it's all about him talking to the Freightliner dealership going, are you sure you did this truck? Because I don't visually see that sandwich bag. Everything's connected properly. And everything looks good to go.
got this problem with the airbags all the way down. So I'm going to do this lever bar. Connected at the grommet, move it up and down, see if I can fill this up. It's a little dirty down here, you gotta get your grubbies on. But it's mainly sliding this grommet off of this leveler bar. It's just a rubber grommet. Just using this vice grip as a fulcrum. Now that's popped off. Now, uh, I can manually move this bar up and down. some air coming in there. My flaps are dragging when it's all the way down. I'm assisting the airbags by raising the trailer up a little bit. There's just a trickling in there. See, it's all coming up right now. I didn't have any air in these bags. Well, that should offset the computer. And it's thinking to fill it up because I raise when it's um, when the air is down, that leveler bar will go up. If it goes too much, it'll go down and it'll discharge. But these bags here are filling up, but that's going to be the trick. That way, I don't mess with these U joints because it's really off of an angle there. I'm glad I found that leveler bar. I'm 
still raising that up. Once I fill it up to, uh, I have a um, suspension gauge on the dash for the airbags and that has um, an air pressure gauge on that and usually about 50 pounds when you have 34,000 on the drives it would be about uh, well other trucks were about 60 this one's a new one so I'll learn but this was at above about 50 pounds but if I have that at 50 then I'll put everything back together that way I'll never go across country bouncing like I did going to California. It's all be, uh, it's all with this um, this back uh, U joint here. It's really in a bind when I don't have air in the bag. It is going up. I'm gonna assist it more here and get this dog up. Gone up a couple inches here, so that's the right way to go is to disconnect that leveler bar, manually move it up, you put some air in these bags, let these suckers grow. They should go a little higher. Well, at least you see these mud flaps start grinding on the ground. When you go across scales, they'll be looking at that and they'll red light you. But, I'm so glad I found that lovely bar the other day. As you can see, once you disconnect that, and you raise it up, you got to keep an eyeball on it. You don't want to blow your airbags by putting too much on there. <coughs> but of course, assisting it by getting the weight off the bags, it'll slowly go up. an old Indian tray comp. Alright. You can see that drive shaft between the two axles is straightening up. I don't want a big bind on that, so I'm watching that. And right where the carrier bearing over to here, you want to look at see if that's a straight shot. Once I'm going up, I'm going to try to get about 50 pounds on these bags. It's nice to have a gauge. Uh, it's still below 450. Once I put the weight back on it, it should nestle right in there. As long as it doesn't discharge, that's good to go. See any truckers that have um, these... Uh, uh, ECAS um, light turn on, and uh, that there uh, messes with your suspension at 45 miles an hour. Uh, it will lower down, and we, we, it's all in the new ones. These are 2021 20, trucks here. And when you get too low, these fairings down here will start uh, scraping. And uh, you got the leveler bars in the front, and it seems to be working, but the box is right back here. This is the box right here. And uh, if you have no air in the airbags, then you go ahead and disconnect like I did to get it. And it's right in front of the fifth plate here. And then you just disconnect it from this rubber grommet. And they'll get you um, uh, backed into getting air in the system by uh, tripping the computer by uh, showing it's too low. And then it'll put air in the bags by raising that up. Once you get it up to the, the weight that you have, the desire, it's mainly by the pressure of your gauge because you have a suspension airbag uh, gauge. And a lot of them use it for the weight um, to see uh, if you're overweight on your, your drives. And that's 34,000, usually about 50. And the Peterbilt was up to 60. But the main thing is connecting this back up again and uh, get on the road again. I appreciate your time when we're hunting together on this. But at least you're not damaging the equipment. You want to make sure that you bring it home safely so you can work on it in the yards. It's a lot cheaper. 
But now this axle, this U-joint back here is not going to be in a bind. You really start hurting things when you twist off the U-joints and the drive shafts on the ground. Anything can happen with that, from that uh, fear when you hear that banging around. Especially the front U-joint, that goes out and moves to the side and really starts messing with it. But I use my screwdriver just to block this from falling down. But this is the leveler bar itself. I bring this back down and connecting this back in the grommet again. And then you want to hook it up real quick because it thinks that it's too high and it'll lower it down by the leveler bar. Well, you see how easy that was. And that, this is it right here. And this is the discharge for the air when it goes to, when you go down, then it takes the air out of the bags. And that way I, I tricked this computer and it shut off the discharge by lowering it. It keeps on lowering the suspension down. That's this box right here. But it, 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 it tricked it because it didn't know the leveler bar sensor. That might have to be replaced, that leveler. And then... <coughs> It was still lowering it. I had the, the idiot lights showing it was still lowering it because it's thinking it's still high. <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and back it back in and connect this back. Alright, that way I can get back on the road again. It's looking real good. i got to get some weight on here. That way it doesn't discharge the air. But even if it's cold, I'll just go ahead and lower your landing gear. Make sure your trailer parts, uh, trailer brakes pulled out. You don't want to have any problems. But you're just pulling it away from the fifth place. So the fifth place on the edge. So you don't really need to take off your electrical and glad hands for your air. But and then you go ahead and. Uh, Unlock your fifth plate, and you slide forward. And you go ahead and make sure that you uh, disconnect that leveler bar right at the grommet, and raise it up, and then it'll raise up a little bit, and then you can go ahead and. measure that and get some air in the bags. Alright. Alright, this is drivable now. Until the mud flaps went right back to the ground again here. I certainly have to adjust that leveler bar. But I got full of air now. Should be alright. This one looks good. This one here is on the ground again. But I'm just too picky when it comes to the measurements. That's the only way to do it is disconnect it because it's pretty far and yeah, tucked in the trailer. Alright, back on the road again.